So we're gonna be going over how to log out users. And with our current setup, it's actually gonna be quite easy. So this is going to be a mutation that we're gonna create. And I'm gonna start by creating a new file under the user folder called logout.ts. Now, usually I will copy paste from a different file, but I finally set up a snippet where I can just say resolver and it's gonna complete uh, a little boilerplate for me. And then I can say logout tab here. This is gonna be a mutation hit tab again, and then I can log out uh, the name here. So this is like a little snippet that I set up. You can also get this snippet if you want or set it up by going into code, preferences, user snippets. And then if you type in TypeScript, you can open it up and you can add your own snippet. So I'll put this in the description below if you'd like to copy and use the snippet that I'm using here. Um, and it's gonna allow you to do what I just did there where it can type in the name and it has a little bit of boiler code. All right, so we have our mutation decorator. We need to import that. And I'm not sure what it's complaining about logout right now. Um, need to have experimental decorators. Uh, well, I have my TS config and I do have that. So I'm just going to restart uh, TypeScript server and it should be happy. All right, so logout, like I said, is gonna be quite easy. So we're, all we're gonna do here is we're gonna say context and we're gonna grab the uh, request object. So my context, and we're gonna say context.request.session.destroy. Destroy. Now I guess this is sometimes undefined, so. Um, there we go, now destroy is actually showing up. So destroy has one parameter, which is a callback. So you'll notice we have to pass in a callback as the parameter and it's gonna return nothing. So we've been usually working with things that return promises. So we've been able to just do async and await, but here we have to do a callback. So this will have any errors. So if we have an error here, we can console.log the error. Otherwise it worked and so uh, I'd like to destroy or I'd like to return this function whenever destroy is done. So what we can do is we can return a new promise. In the promise here, we can uh, have a function resolve or reject. And uh, just so you see what this looks like. So we have a new promise um, and this parentheses goes down to here. And then we have a function right here. The function takes two parameters. So when you uh, pass in a function to promise, you get a resolve and reject. And so whenever the callback is finished, so this is our callback or we're calling destroy. And then we pass in another function for the callback. Uh, we can call resolve to true, it worked. And we can reject false, it did not work for some reason. So now we're gonna be returning a promise with a Boolean. So I'm gonna say Boolean from our mutation here. Um, and I think, yeah, it returns a Boolean. We can see that right there, cool. Uh, so I'm gonna say that the GraphQL type is a Boolean as well. Um, and then we are good to go. So all we're doing is calling the session.destroy and that gets rid of the logged in user session. So our server is up and running. We can restart this and or refresh this and we can see logout over here and our mutations. Um, nope, it didn't show up. Let's just restart the server then. Something looks like it got messed up. And we'll refresh this. And now I can see logout. So I'm gonna come over here. So I'm currently logged in. So if I call the me query, we'll see that I'm logged in as Bob, Bob4. And now I can call log out, run that, and it looks like it returned true. So now if I come back over here and call me, it's gonna return null because we're no longer logged in. Now you'll notice down here, the cookie still shows up. So request.destroy or session.destroy just destroys the session. It doesn't cl actually clear the cookie for the user. So if you want to, you can also clear the cookie. Uh, the way you do that is by calling uh, the response.clear. Um, and we don't actually have the response object in our context right now, but we can add it. 
So that's going to be in our index.ts file and the Apollo server context. We can also get access to the response object here and we can pass that into our context. So now that we add something to our context, I want to update my context type, which I, here we go, it's underneath the folder types. So it's going to be response. And we can import that from Express. All right, so now we can access this in our resolver. So we're going to say, uh, no matter, I guess we don't really want to clear it here. So if it worked, we'll say return. Otherwise, we're going to return that there. So here what I can do is I can say context.response.clearCookie and then we put the name of the cookie we want to clear. In this case, the one I want to clear is called QID. All right, so I'm going to clear it here. I'm going to re-log in. Oh, server, did I crash the server? Nope, it's just still starting up. Um, response does not exist on my context. I feel like it was just one too slow. Let me save it um, and it should be good. Uh, but now we're gonna be able to have this cookie cleared as well. If you care about the cookie being cleared, it doesn't really matter. Uh, where is this coming from, logout? I'm not sure why it's doing this. It looks like it is happy here. I'm just gonna go ahead and restart mine again. All right, yeah, so now it restarted just fine. Not sure why it's acting up today. All right, so let's log in. We get a cookie. Uh, we can call me, we get the user. And now when we log out, um, we get true here and it also clears the cookie as you saw. And again, if I try to run it, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, so that is pretty much log out. Uh, so as you can see, it's not too complex. We're just calling uh, context session.destroy and clearing the cookie using the clear cookie response function. Uh, using new promise may be a little new to you. So we return a function there uh, inside. We actually pass a function to the promise. So that's how that works. And this promise we can then await if we want to or just return and GraphQL will actually resolve it for us. Now there's one thing I wanted to answer a question about that I got in the last video uh, before we end real quick. And that is with our register input. So we extended this password input. Um, that way we didn't have to duplicate fields and one question that I got is how can we do this if we have multiple inputs? So like for example, I want to extend password input and something else, right? Some other class that we have. Because there's not multiple inheritance in TypeScript, we can't actually extend two classes like this. How can we do that? And this is actually a question that I had uh, when I was first starting this. And I actually asked the creator of TypeGraphQL and it turns out he gave me a little piece of code that we can use. Um, and it's using mixins, um, we can kind of get around this constraint. So here it is an example mixin. So you'll notice uh, it's a function and you'll notice that here is our class. So here is a very simple mixin or a simple class as well. So this input type, I called it OK input. All it does is it has a single field that's a Boolean that's called OK. And so you'll notice uh, we have a function here that takes a class um, and it returns this OK input class and all it does is it extends from this class that you pass in. Uh, you'll notice we're also using a generic here, that way it's type safe. So we're passing the generic as the type there. So what this will allow you to do is we can actually use this mixin to add multiple inheritance kind of. So now in my, not my logout, but my register input, I can say OK mixin. Um, and now we'll let our server restart. And if I come over to my schema, register. Oh yeah, we need to restart. Register, register input. You'll notice that there's an OK field on this now. So it's both getting the password and the OK field from two different inputs. So you can pretty much turn uh, these all these things into mixins if you want it. So we can turn our password input into a mixin as well. Um, so to do that, we're gonna just copy this first line. And we're just gonna wrap our class here. So this is gonna be password mixin. And I'm gonna return password input. 
and password input is just going to extend the base class. And I need to import the class type, which comes from type GraphQL. So now I can use our password input or password mix in really. Uh, now if password mix in, if you only have a single mix in or the innermost mix in, you just need to pass in an empty class. So we're gonna say class like that. Let this restart. Um, did I mess something up? Maybe we have to give the class a name. I can't remember. Um, and let me see if we messed up anything here. It doesn't look like we messed up anything here. I need to compile property password does not exist on type change password. Ah, oh, yes. So we are using this password input over here. So I'm going to say password mix in and pass an empty class over here. But now you get the idea is where we can kind of do infinite mixins, um, and you would do it like that. So it's kind of like higher order components where you would pass them in and you can just pass, you can wrap it as many times as you want to extend as many classes as you need to. And this way you can have it kind of, kind of get around the not being able to extend multiple classes. Um, not sure. I'm going to have to look into why my TS node dev is having trouble restarting. But we'll refresh this, and sure enough, we should see the exact same thing for a register input, and we do password and OK has those two fields in it. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and just remove the OK mixin from this because we don't actually want the OK mixin from our register. I just wanted to give you guys an example of how that would work.